Now, what is a macro? A macro is an automated input sequence that imitates keystrokes or mouse actions. That's the technical term, but what can macros do for you on a CNC machine? Well, macro variables can make your shot more efficient in an infinite amount of ways, and mastering them is what will take you from being a good machinist to an expert level programmer. Ever since I did that video on segmented threading, you guys have all been asking for more videos on macros. As you can see in my book here, guys, there is a lot to go over in macros. So in today's video, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're just gonna do a tool counting macro. This came up a lot for me as an applications engineer. I found that every single machine out there has their own way of doing tool counters and their own menus with either using time or an amount of parts that they've ran. So I would write macros like this to make it so all the operator would have to do is press start. The macro takes care of everything. It counts the tool life, it resets the messages for you, it does everything. And that's why I wanna show you guys this because you could probably use it on your machine right now. So in today's video, I made a pin so we could focus on just the programming. And because I like you guys so much, I made the part super simple so we could just focus on the programming itself. All right, now before we get typing away on our keyboard like Ray Charles on a piano, we need to make sure the variables we're using are not being used already. Depending on the manufacturer of your machine tool, they might be using certain macro variables already in different subprograms for like where your tail stock is or whatever. So you need to go in into your offset screen and make sure they're not being used. So after pressing offset, arrow key over to where it says macro. Press macro and then type in the variable you think might be open. For me, it's gonna be 600. I've already checked this so I know there's gonna be nothing in there. Make sure there's nothing in there. Your machine tool might be using some of these variables. All these you see here were used in my thread macro that you guys saw, I don't know, two months ago, whenever that came out. So yeah, that's what all these are. So let's go in our program now. We're gonna go to the top of our program and we're gonna enter in our max tool life count here. So we're gonna have two variables in this video. We're gonna have our counter and we're gonna have our max tool life. Let's put the max tool life at the top of our program because that's what makes the most sense. So I'm gonna to go to the top of my program. I'm gonna add some end of blocks. I'm gonna add my variable. So I'm gonna say shift pound 601, shift equals 10. This will be our max tool life here. 10 represents the max tool life, which is the number of cycles the machine's gonna run through before it falls out. So basically in this case, 10 means 10 parts. Now all that's gonna do is that's gonna populate 601 with a 10, which will do nothing as of right now. It's not until we add the logic that this is gonna have any power in our program. And we're gonna speed this part up so you don't go crazy here. T112, shh. Space, max base, tool, life, insert. All right, so this might look like a bunch of gibberish, but this is our tool path you're watching in the video. I'm gonna add at the end of my tool path a counter that's gonna add one each time this tool runs. So I'm gonna do that by typing in pound 600 equals pound 600 plus one. All right, you can see right here, each time this runs, it's gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and now we're gonna add the logic so when it gets to 10, which was our max we put at the top, it's gonna to alarm out the machine. So let's do that. All right, so this particular program is gonna end with a cutoff. And I wanna have the machine fault out right there because that's a known position. You wouldn't wanna make the machine fault out after it turns because then you have a half done part sticking out of the spindle and it would just be chaos for your operator. You wanna make it so all they have to do is press start to make this work. So after it cuts off right here, I'm gonna add this logic statement. I'm gonna use an if statement. There's multiple statements you can use in macro programming. You have if, while, and, then, but today we're just gonna focus on if. If is kind of like saying, if I'm hungry, then go eat a pizza. But in here, we're gonna have different conditions than that, obviously the machine doesn't eat a pizza. So we're gonna say if pound 600, which is our counter, is greater than or equal to pound 601, go to one, two, three, four. So what does this mean? Let's break it down. GE is greater than or equal to. You have equal to, which is EQ. You have greater than, which is GT. You have less than, which is LT. And you have less than or equal to, which is LE. All of this can be in the set of conditions you see here after the if statement. Now, if that statement is true, again, if you're hungry, then go eat pizza, or if you're hungry, go to the pizza shop. If pound 600 is greater than or equal to pound 601, it's gonna say go to one, two, three, four. It's important to note that those are O's there, not zeros in the go to statement. Go to will jump to any sequence number. A sequence number is an N, all right? So in this case, I have N one, two, three, four somewhere in my program. If these conditions are met, it's gonna jump to one, two, three, four. So let's do that. I can actually search for it on the keyboard. I can say N one, two, three, four, and I can arrow key down. Now this takes us to where we're gonna reset our counter, turn off our coolant, position our machine so our operator can hop right in there and change our insert. So what's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is you're gonna to wanna to reset your counter. 
you're gonna wanna say pound 600 equals zero or else you're gonna change your insert and then every single time after that, it's gonna fault out. You don't want that. So the first thing you do is you reset your tool counter. Now, after this is gonna be very machine specific. Like if you had a turret lathe, you might wanna index your turret at this point to a position that's convenient to access your insert. In this case, I just moved the gang back just to show you a little bit of movement. It's not really the biggest difference in the world of the operator here, but what it'll do is it'll send the X1 axis home as you'll see in the video. It'll turn off the coolant because obviously you don't wanna change an insert while the coolant's running. I slow down my spindle and then I stop it. So I command 100 RPM to start slowing it down and then I stop the spindle. So this next bit's pretty important here. So you have pound 3006 equals one. If you say pound 3006 equals one, anything in parentheses after that will be the message that comes up on the screen. And don't be too tempted here to put funny stuff on the screen because yeah, I guess everyone does do that. I've done that. I've, yeah, I've put self-destruct sequence activated before and I watched the guy like run around a shop and freak out. I miss those days. One important thing to know here as well is that if I said pound 3000 equals one, that'll do an alarm, not a message. The difference being is that if you do an alarm, it's gonna actually fault out the machine. You won't be able to hit start at this point. So that's why I chose to use a message instead. And then after that, I have an M00. So the message comes up and it waits. Now, if you want, you can also put the note on the M00. There's a lot of ways to do this. It's just, this is kind of how I do it. I like to draw a message so it brings it up for the operator, but you could just put the note on the M00 if your operators are trained well enough to know what to look for. All right, so you hit your M0, you changed your insert, and now you're pressing start again. Now your machine's gonna be different than this most likely, but mine, I had to rerun the cutoff because I brought the gang back. And then once I'm done, I stop the spindle and then I say go to five, six, seven, eight. Remember, go to with O's, not zeros, jumps to a sequence number. That sequence number in this case is gonna be N five, six, seven, eight. You don't need to include the N in your go-to statement, but if I do it here, if I say N5678 and I hit up, it jumps right to the end of my program. You'll see here N loop. So what did it do? It, it cut off, it went back, it gave me a message, it changed my insert, press start, it restaged everything. Now it's gonna continue going. So I found as an applications engineer, going around and doing turnkeys for all sorts of different companies that it's way easier to do macros like this for people because if you have to show someone these tool counting menus on all these different machines, it can be really confusing for operators. I mean, even if you were a doctor straight out of college and I showed you these weird menus that are all these different machines, it'd be a pain to learn. It's much easier just to have a message come up to say, hey, change this specific insert and have it restage everything. All your operator is gonna have to do here is press start, which is super convenient. And I guess that's it. I kind of added in the middle of a sentence there, but I honestly, that's, that's it. Okay, so we've got all this typed out in our program now. How is this gonna work in the real world? Well, you're gonna press cycle start. First thing it's gonna do, it's gonna make 601 equal 10. Then it's gonna do its machining, and then after your machining each time, you're gonna add one to 600. So 600 is gonna equal itself plus one. It's important to look at this plus one here as each part you're making, right? So you're gonna do your cutoff and you're gonna look at this logic. Now until 600 equals 10, it's just gonna skip this logic because these conditions aren't met. If it skips this logic, it's gonna hit the end of the program and jump up and repeat this over and over and over until it reaches 10 in this case. So once these conditions are met, it's actually gonna make it jump underneath your M30 to the messages we wrote earlier in there, letting your operator know to change his insert and then restage everything to get back into production as quick as possible. So we're at part nine out of 10 right now. Let's run one more part and see how this looks in practice. So this is our last part right here, okay? It's gonna run it, it's gonna come back, and it's gonna be ready for me to do the tool change. You'll see here, we're alarmed out on a menu. It says change tool 112 CNMG turn. So let's do that. Open our door. Bada bing, bada boom. Grab our tool. Now, this is super convenient because this kind of metal KM micro series, all I have to do is change out the head. And that is nice because I don't have to change the insert in the machine. So I just pop my head out here, change it with the other one in my hand here. 
Speaking of kettle metal tooling, you'd be crazy right now not to go on our website and check out titansofcnctooling.com. It helps support things like free education. It also helps support things like CNC experts so our boy here, Chris, can keep working out. You could go on there right now and get certified. You could go on there right now and get certified to be... You could go on there. <laughs> he is getting tired. We could keep this bit going all day. You could go on there right now and get certified in CAM, CAD, or CNC. And it's all for free. Brought to you by Titans of CNC. That sounds like a rap and a rhyme. It could be a crime to make my Chris here lift a million times. Oh! <laughs> so now that our insert's changed and all that's over with, all we have to do is press start and we're good to go. And that's it. That's pretty much the tool change macro for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been wanting to bring you guys more and more macro videos like this. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see. So that's it for our video today on macros, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for our future videos because we're gonna go into the local variables, the system variables, all that stuff. We're gonna show you the trigonomic functions like tangent, sine, and cosine, all the goodies as these videos come out. So stay tuned. If you have any idea so as far as what we could do in later videos, let us know in the comment section below. I'm, I'd love to get to them. If you have any macros you'd personally like to see get done, let me know. Other than that, me and Tyler here are going to Switzerland next week, so stay tuned, guys, because we are going to have a blast. Hornos is taking us out there, treating us to a sweet week. Tyler's just awkwardly staring at the camera right now. He's not used to it like I am, but he'll get better over the trip. Don't worry, Tyler. We'll, 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 we'll get you broken in. Yeah, already, just future thanks to Tornos and Titan. This job has been amazing. I love you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye! Yay! So Donnie and I are going to go shopping today. We have to go get our gear for Switzerland. Oh, here he comes. Shop it. Guys aren't already, follow us on our other social media platforms like Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn. We're posting behind the scenes footage like the stuff you're seeing right now.